yeah, it's interesting when we talk changes. We've we've had a fair bit of time between games, but um, well, Tommy Duday has come back into our side, so you know we couldn't be more pleased to have uh, a leader back into the team and um, a very good footballer um, at the same time. So uh, that's a tough one for for Gibber, um, who's performed reasonably well over the last few weeks and over the break. So you know Tommy will come straight in for for Gibbsy down back. Um, that'll make us a little taller down back, uh, but we feel like we're pretty flexible with, with some of those matchups. And then um, in other areas, we've looked to uh, get a debutant in with uh, Ned McHenry, which is, um, which is really pleasing because Ned's, we would love to have played Ned round one. He just wasn't quite ready physically at that point. So this, this um, time away has given him a chance to work on his, on his physicality. Um, and you're gonna see some of that come through because he's a feisty little one. Um, and then two of our slightly more experienced guys but that have come from, from other clubs um, who haven't put a foot wrong for pretty much since day one of arriving in Crocker and Keys. So we're really pleased to give those guys a, a shot at it. There's a perception maybe when those two came across they might have been depth players but you've got them in pretty quickly. It's an interesting perception. I've been 23 years old. You know, they're, they're more than part of, hopefully more than part of a successful future. Um, we love the way they go about it. What we get from those two off field um, is leadership, is attention to detail. So to have those guys come in, what you're going to see, especially from a, a Benny Keys who can play multiple roles, um, when he does get himself in that in the midfield for, for stints, um, you'll see him really get in there and run run things and lead by example. So hopefully he comes in and, and has a strong game. A big opportunity for those club debutants, some of the youngsters. Um, Baptism of fire, I mean, it's a big test in a showdown first up. Yeah, it is. It is. It's perfect. Great experience for them. So, you know, that's what we're about, is getting some experience into these younger players. Um, as I said before, and Ned McHenry, to get him into a, a showdown first up, what a great start to his footy career, one he'll remember. And he'll take a lot of learnings out of it, and I hope, uh, you know, some of those are really positive. I know you touched on it. It would have been tough to call on Bryce. Um, he's getting on, given that you're sort of playing the younger side. Um, it's an interesting one. We had a we had a good conversation yesterday. Um, obviously, that was you know when we finally s selected the side. Um, we've talked over the last few weeks around what it's starting to look like. Um, Tommy Duday coming back in is um, yeah he's a he's a leader of our club currently, and, and he's going to be a very very strong leader of our club going forward, uh, especially in that back six. So. Uh, or seven, we play, you know, normally play seven back there. So for, for him to come in, Bryce's understanding of, of how it looks at this point, you know, Bryce is probably going up more against a, a Laird, Brown, Miller in those positions. So we've got some really good depth down back. We're going to continue to work with, with Gibber and, and he'll play some footy. He'll play plenty of footy this year. It's just a matter of what that mix looks like. So you can still see him getting back in there and that's probably though if he does in the, in the defence. Yeah, we'll definitely look. I mean, down back's where he's trained the whole year and he's been, uh, look, as far as leadership goes and the, what he adds to our group on field, um, he's an important part of what we're doing this year. You see that some of those guys have come in, like Nick, to your direct replacement for Tyson, and will he be expected to pitch in the midfield as well? Uh, well, Key's coming in gives us a little bit more flexibility if something happens. In round one, we actually were forced to play uh, Lynchy uh, through that midfield. So... That's, that's part of the reason we had a look at, at, at another midfielder into our forward mix. Um, we'd like to think Ned gets most of his game up forward without giving too much away, but he does have the ability to play wing and he's a feisty, as I said before, he's a feisty little bugger. He'll, he'll enjoy getting inside if, if he gets the opportunity. And for Paul, I mean, obviously Tommy come, coming back in is a, you know, a bit of a lay down, but yep. the fact that there is potentially a bias that kicks in a bit of more timber down there for quite a way, uh, does that influence the structure up at all? Uh, well, I mean, it does. We always we got huge respect for the opposition, but at the same time, we're doing a fair bit of work on what we do well. Um, yeah, so so down back at the moment, we're probably a little taller than you know possibly what they will be. I mean, Marshall's Marshall's a uh, pretty an all-round player, uh, young, super footballer, plays a little bit tall and small, but a lot more lead up. I mean, even Westoff, you know, some would say, well, you, they've got Westoff forward. He's a tall. Well, we know he can get around the ground like he's a small. So. Um, 
we believe we're flexible enough to be able to go with uh, what they're going to be able to put forward. We've seen a, a fair bit of training and stuff over the last sort of couple of weeks, especially since the presumption. How do you feel that the game plan's evolved in the last sort of three or four weeks since you've come back and yeah. how far along is it, how far advanced is it from the previous time? From round one? Well, potentially, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, well, round one, we let ourselves down in the contest and we didn't show um, our ability to seek the contest like we wanted to. And that's where we're trying to get to. So we've got improvement that we, ne that we need to, to make in those areas. Um, we had the benefit of spending you know, um, a lot of time over this break working on that, uh, both from a theory point of view, from what it looks like, but also from, from a training point of view. Hopefully you, you've been able to see that at the sessions you've come out to. And, um, when we've been able to put some match play uh, on the field, um, we've more than beat each other up. So I, I'm confident we've done some really good work in that space, but the true test is Saturday night and, and we're up against a, a very good opposition that are in good form, um, but it's a showdown, so who knows? You know Ken Hinkley as well as anyone um, working with him. Does that give you an advantage or does he have, you know, is there anything in that or you know, knowing the way he coaches, etc. Does that help you at all, or is it just a tip I, I don't know, to be honest. I, I won't know until the game starts to play out. Um, I know him. I know him really well. Uh, I know what he likes and the way he likes to coach. And he's a very, very good coach. And I've, I've taken a lot of stuff from him. It's a lot of my learnings are from Ken. So, huge respect. Um, I would like to walk off and give him an elbow at the end of the game, and maybe, maybe have a win under my belt, but. I'm sure he wants to do that as well. Any text messages or you don't do that game that again? Oh, I, I, I've left that for this week. Yeah, yeah. I was asking about how you're going you to cover the loss of Matner and also Ben Hart. How, how has that worked in the past couple of months now? Yeah, I, well, I guess two different examples, but our, our coaching department um, has been cut substantially, as have all coaching departments. Um, what we have done really well, and it's a credit to our playing group, is they've stood up. So um, there's been more responsibility put on players as far as running sessions. You know, training in groups of eight, where we can't get a player, uh, sorry, a coach into that group, or we're 20 metres away. Um, we've relied on our players to show maturity and basically run sessions. Um, I think it's been a bonus for us, to be honest. I think our players have stood up. Uh, on a game day, we've always worked with them. That it's, it's your day. Um, we can't come down on the ground and help you game day. We can look from above. Um, so I think we'll actually be better for it going forward. Um, but uh, you know, as being respectful at the same time, it's been really hard to lose uh, some, some really good operators as far as our coaching group goes. Um, but other people have stood up. Doc Clark's come in and he's doing a fair bit of work with our forwards at the moment, just on the, the finer details. So, We've got some really good coaches that are still here that have, that have stepped, stood up. We're all getting our hands a little dirtier than what we might have in the past. Um, but I think we'll be a better group going forward as far as our playing group and coaching group. Is that an extra burden yourself to take on those sort of No burden because they have to hold me back. I love getting involved. Um, I want to do more. I want to get in amongst the playing group. At the moment, the frustration is uh, we get two sessions a week where we can get amongst the boys and... Um, you know, really get into coaching detail. Um, the rest of it's done over Zoom platforms, smaller groups in and out of the building. So um, that's been tough, but no issues whatsoever. I, I quite enjoy getting in. No, it doesn't. It doesn't distract us. Um, we're doing, look, we're doing whatever we can at the moment and we're working on the way we move forward. Uh, that's embracing our past players. That's making sure we're using the expertise that we have and some of the experience that's there. Uh, we're constantly um, seeking to, to get, keep in touch with those guys, get them back into the program, make sure that... Um, as I said before, that some of the experience that you've got from some of these guys, they've gone through some of the best times at this footy club. Um, if we can tap into that and we can gain anything from it, get them back involved. I mean, I'm an ex-player 
from a footy club. And I know what it means when you do go back to your own, you know, that club you played for for, for a decade. Um, if the doors are open and you feel welcome, it's a great place to be. So that's what we're going to do going forward. So last night as well, players um, down on one knee We're, we're in conversations at the moment um, with Port Adelaide as well. We, we really love to, to make a statement on where we sit and um, uh, we don't stand for racism whatsoever. So uh, at this point, nothing's locked in, but we are looking into it. Look, in that space, we've had uh, a number of discussions over the last you know, two, three weeks around what that would look like. We've got unanimous support across the group. So football club, players, staff. Um, so as I said, the details of what it is we will do aren't locked in yet, but there'll be something for Saturday night. Yeah, it, it's amazing because it depends on who you speak to about what sort of spectacle it was. It's, if you like defence, um, you know, defence was where it needs to be. Um, it may take some time for some of that connection to come back. Um, that's how I felt post-game. I thought, geez, it was just that tiny missed connection piece that um, we've been training in small groups. We've had limited opportunity to get 22 players together and really connect the group up. So uh, it was low scoring. Uh, obviously tight towards the end which was exciting but um, it may take some time for, for some of the some of the teams to get that skill level back to where it needs to be.